welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and I'm also here with Val Tagini. And Val, you're with... Hi, I'm doing this on behalf of Magdalene Code. So it's very exciting for both of us, I think, to interview Serene. So I'm, I'm truly excited about this. Lovely to be here. I'm so happy to chat to you both and, and explore the feminine mysteries together. Serene is the author of two books, Womb Awakening and one to come out soon, The Magdalene Mysteries, The Left-Hand Path of the Feminine Christ. I think I should just let you two women talk because, <laughs> you know, it's really about the womb. It's really about the sacred feminine. So <laughs> go ahead. I'll just listen. Actually, Alan, I would like to start, um, you know, so I was perusing this wonderful, beautiful book, The Womb Awakening. I mean, We'll, we'll focus on the womb awakening first, and then we'll move over to the Magdalene Mysteries. So um, on 222, which is 22 is my lucky number, and so is Alan. We both have a... We both We're both born on the 22nd. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> Magdalene's number. Yes, I was wow. born on July 22nd. Yes. Wow. So anyway, go ahead, Val. Yes. So, on, um, so well, I want to really start this like as like a... Um, like a, an awakening to people. This is not just about, um, you know, having information, but it's also about healing and clearing. And on 222, you're, you're, you speak of listening to the voice of love. Mm. And you have these questions, which I think we should really start off this um, in, interview stating, like asking yourself, asking the womb, how much, primordial love you have you are receiving in your life right now mm. and the questions are do you experience physical touch pleasure intimacy with others do you experience physical touch pleasure intimacy with yourself like these kind of questions i want to go through them but these kind of questions i feel like are something that we it's a good time to go through mm. Mm. as we are all quarantined yeah and just kind of going, like, let's just opening up hearts before we really go through the material. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, like, okay, so do you mind if I, if I ask the questions? You can f go for it, yeah. So do, you want to say, do you want to say a prayer first? You know, what I would like to share with people is that the prayer of the womb is always a welcome. And it's a holding and it's a nourishing and it's a nurturing. And one of the, the qualities of the womb is it includes everyone and everything. So as, you know, Alan said, sometimes men come to this work and think, well, I don't have a womb. But we're talking about a womb in the metaphysical sense. And every human being comes from a womb. So every human being is part of womb consciousness. And every living creature and intelligence in the universe is part of the womb consciousness of the mother. And in this, uh, you know, point in time it feels like we can use words like quarantine but we can also use the word womb it feels like we're in a womb and you know in the womb awakening book when we discuss this a womb can either feel cozy and safe a place where you can replenish but it can also feel tight and uncomfortable and claustrophobic and a place that something new is being birthed and it, it's uh, it's an unknowing so yeah, it feels like a, 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 a prayer, you know, for all of us and everyone listening and the whole world right now is to, to just tune into this beautiful primordial womb consciousness and understand that we can never be outside of that womb of love. There is no reality that exists outside of it. And the womb gives a lot. And it asks a lot of us, you know, that's, that's a birthing space. That's a rebirthing space. That's also a menstruating space, which is a place that lets go of energies, but in a really constructive way. So it looks like a dismantling and but it's a rebirth. So, uh, you know, I've been tuning in in the last while to the idea of when the womb menstruates, the lining 
is released, but the womb is intact. <laughs> it's not a complete destruction of the infrastructure that holds and sustains us. It's the release of a certain cyclical aspect in order that we can bring through a new fertility and a new birthing potential. So, so we're using a lot of birth metaphors and feminine metaphors, but they're non-gendered at their heart. So, so yeah, so if we, you know, can all take a moment to just feel, feel that beautiful womb holding us and what our relationship is to it. And we can pray for a safe and healthy birth and rebirth for us in the world. <sighs> so, be it. so we are being rebirthed now, aren't we? <laughs> It certainly feels that way. It feels more like we're in the menstrual cycle right now. You know, the severe PMT and the, you know, the confusion and the dissolution. But I, I really do feel that's the teaching of the womb. There is when something ends, something begins. Speaking to that, in your book, you, you speak of the womb mysteries of the, the red egg. Mm -hmm. and, and in the red egg... We, you speak of how it's symbolic to the the risen Christ, and yes. that it is so. It's just so timely at this time that we're do, going through this forty yeah. forty day period of of this new resurrection. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to before we we get into the questions? Do you want to speak to that? Yeah, actually, Asha and I were just talking about this this morning, the amazing symbolism. I looked up today the exact days of Lent, which are, you know, the end of February till I think April the 9th. And, you know, one of the things we investigated, you know, during all our researches for our ancestors, the, the time of Lent was a, a very difficult time. It was a time when the food stores had usually started to run out and starvation and illness was, you know, upon you and so this was known as a really the most difficult time of the year of the the mystery of the earth cycles and then you know come easter and spring and the earth mother renews and we can once more trust in her nourishment we see her food but of course in the modern world we don't have you know when we have supermarkets we've lost touch with that and so Lent, which is now a religious holiday, you know, was originally, you know, it came from um, that time period where, where humans didn't have much and it was a difficult time and they, they, they didn't go out and eat and feast. This was not a time of feasting. This was a time to come into yourself and, and um, you know, conserve resources. So it's interesting that for the first time in maybe, you know, at least a thousand years, humanity has, has, has experienced this time, people, time period as our ancient ancestors experienced it as a time of, of, of worry over scarce resources you know, a time of, 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 of that aspect of our humanity coming up and then the great celebration and resurrection when she is risen again and the fruits are on the trees and the, you know, everything's blooming and you can feed your children and, you know, and the festivities began. So, so it's really interesting timing exactly that we're going through this kind of great easter mystery together uh, you know as humanity and and um you know and, and in in the womb work as we said it's it's completely entangled with symbolism of womb shamanism so so the thing that you would least likely put together is you know a monotheistic patriarchal religion and the ancient shamanic traditions of uh, the wise prehistoric wise women you know they seem like two completely different paths but actually they're very entwined and uh, and a lot of the symbol is borrowed and it's not only borrowed but I, I actually feel that it's preserved some of its um, 
potency. So, so in, in my journey, though, I'm not a Christian. I've, I've developed a great respect for some of the great ideas that express through that system because it's a perennial wisdom. So the story of Mary Magdalene with the red egg, it's, it's this, um, you know, really potent, um, symbol and in fact the new moon on tuesday when magdalene mysteries is released was also known as the egg moon so uh and it, it's the symbol the red egg is the symbol of both menstruation and fertility it's the symbol of rebirth because in the modern world you know when we have such a negative en energy around menstruation and and it has one aspect of it that's a, a, a dissolution but it's also the promise of fertility. So when a woman gets her first menstruation, it means she's fertile, like the, she can bear life. I mean, it's an incredible gift. Mm -hmm. And the same way when a woman has her menstrual cycle, it announces she's fertile. And actually, when you look through at some of the indigenous traditions like the Kogi, they have these amazing prayers where, where, where they say, and then the mother menstruated and she was fertile and the land was fertile again. You also say in here how the men, the priest, the male priest took over and yeah. let the women, wouldn't let the women come in. They used animal sacrifice to... Yeah imitate the blood of the woman the menstruation exactly so the the really special thing about menstrual blood is we've written in, in womb awakening and it was it was really an amazing thing because it was back in 2012 and i was having all these you know revelations come through about the blood and menstrual blood is not just a waste product as we've been taught it's actually full of stem cells which can regrow and, and anyone interested in you know regenerative medicine and stem cells with miraculous results and um and the stem cells in menstrual blood they 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 can be used on anyone they're 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 very inclusive because they, they, they grow a baby, they grow another self in, in the womb. So there's this incredible magic. It's, it's a blood that brings life. Whereas normally, you know, if you bleed, you're injured or you, you may die. So, so, so menstrual blood, womb blood is this blood that brings life. But then when the, um, spiritual traditions of the feminine were taken over by exclusively male priesthoods they don't have the blood of life and but we find it i think hard to imagine now that they were in a culture where that idea that the female blood was life was so um deeply held that they had to conjure up the blood from somewhere, you know? It was like people wouldn't have believed in the magic without this, this dimension. And so sadly it passed to, you know, a, a blood of sacrifice or death. And, you know, we know where that story ends up and we, we want to switch out of that story back to the blood of life. Okay, so shall we ask the questions to open up? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so do you experience physical touch, pleasure, intimacy with others? Do you experience physical touch, pleasure, intimacy with yourself? Do you feel held and heard by others? Can you share your authentic self? Do you hear and receive your own intuitive feelings and desires? Do you receive hugs, cuddles, strokes, pleasure, pampering? Do you feel supported both practically and emotionally by others? Do you support yourself to feel everything and follow your heart? Do you physically and soulfully nurture yourself every day? Do you allow nature to nurture you? Can you receive her presence? Do you commune with animals and exchange loving touch? Do you receive primordial love from the divine creator in a felt way. Mm. I and feel if, if every human received all of that, we'd be a different species, yeah. wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah. And I was going to just say that most of us don't. No, no. And you know, for me, most of our spiritual paths don't 
discuss this oh. and uh, and it's really considered un unspiritual you know to need a cuddle to need a hug to need companionship um, you know all these very feminine uh, qualities and so you know on my path and I'm sure many of us as path and especially now in this time we're questioning uh, this model of a spirituality that is so out of the body it's talking about love and it's talking about the heart but somehow it's like up there you know it's and it's how we can bring that into the body and share it and you know one of the um one of the things I percolated when I was pregnant, it, I kept having dreams about domestic witches and domestic wizards. And, and again, at, at this, when you're pregnant, it's like a confinement. I was very, I uh, had a lot of nausea and vomiting during my pregnancy. So I was certainly confined and I really did feel like it's like a shamanic <laughs> confinement, you know, for months and months and months and you, you, you're in the house, you know, um, and you're in the domestic sphere and it's and I, I i find it interesting the parallel now that we've all been forced to retreat into our domestic sphere which has always been considered a feminine space and and what we see is that the the domestic space which has been feminine has been um it's not even it's not even been diminished it's been completely ignored like it's nothing, like it's meaningless, like it has no value, no power. Also, but, like it's old fashioned. It's it's nothing that, you know, we should just look, it's from the past. It's nothing. That yeah. And I know even as a woman. Realizing how holy our personal space is. How yeah. Should, we're forced to contend with the space we created. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and a home is a womb. You know, I love in the in the Basque religions, they actually didn't have churches. Your home was your church. The hearth was actually considered with the fire, the temple. And actually, you know, the ancestors were buried either, you know, underneath the house or, you know, it was the whole, the house was, was the temple. And, and so I know, and, and obviously Alan as a man, will, this will be your life, but even as a woman growing up in, you know, the times I did, it was like your value, your power, your purpose came outside your house. You know, it's like it came outside, you know, you went you kind of, you have this personal sphere, you know, where you cuddle your cat in bed and you make a cup of tea and, you know, all the things, you know, you make yourself, but that's not spiritual or powerful or purposeful. That's only achieved in the world doing great things. And, and so, you know, the, 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 the womb path or the feminine path brings us back to this domestic sphere, which firstly is our own body. The womb, I think, is the most spiritual part uh, of, of the human being, of women, because it is an interdimensional passageway. It's the only way spirit exactly. can become into form. And that's why it's holy and sacred. Yeah. It's a cosmic gateway. It's absolutely a cosmic gateway. And, and, and it's this metaphor of, you know, wombs within wombs within wombs. And, and it's, it's where we hold energy. And it's where, um, yeah, the interdimensional comes through us. Uh, it's, it's this center we have. And whether you're a man or a woman, obviously a woman, uh, brings through a spirit from another dimension. I mean, you know, my husband and I talk about this all the time, you know, when I was pregnant and gave birth, people don't really discuss the spiritual dimensions of it because I think it blows people's mind. <laughs> it's like, where did you get that baby from? Well, I just created it in my womb. Well, where did the soul come from that animated? Well, I just brought it through from another dimension. And, um, and I think it blows our minds so much and it would really blow our society apart to really dwell on it. But now we need to dwell on it. We need, we to, need to dwell on it. And of course, that brings us into the realm of the dimension 
domestic and then these questions uh, that we've asked, this like touch and this primal love, this is what you give a baby. And you know, one of the things I've really, you know, the, the kind of love you give a baby, you know, the food, the cuddles, the touch, the baby's crying, you soothe it, you know, it's, it's all cuddle puddles and naps in bed and love. And then you kind of get to adulthood and you flicked out into the world. <laughs> True. And, you know, you're an exile from the mother energy. And then often the only way we can kind of even come to that is, is, in, is in sexual relationships. But that doesn't go very well because, you know, we first need to understand and commune with and cultivate this deep feminine energy uh, within ourselves and, and kind of understand that, men and women, all genders, were this amazing feminine portal of a transmission. And, and once we're sat in that understanding and cultivation, then we can kind of go out into the world. Um, but we don't have that. And we just get flicked out into a patriarchal world at 18. And I know, you know, sometimes I, I read a line of poetry at, it, I can't remember, I was in my 20s or 30s and they had writ written, if someone touched me, I would dissolve. It had been so long since they'd been touched. And I, I think how many of us experience that, you know, and especially in, you know, Northern Europe and North America, it's a, it's, they're not cultures that encourage touch at all. It's um, very afraid of the feminine dimension. Western world is becoming more open to it, but the Eastern world even more so. There's yeah. more, more taboo, um, the, the, the feminine touch or just the touch in general. Yeah. Uh, I was in a, a spiritual circle and everybody was offering some gifts and, you know, light, energy work, Reiki, um, whatever it was. Some, you know, everything seemed like a superpower. And I just said, and I'm capable of doing many things. I can do many different things but I offered cuddling mm. and the whole room started laughing mm. as if it was such a an odd thing to offer mm. in this you know spiritual circle and but I but I just tune into my own self saying this is what I need this mm. is not for you it's for me yeah, if, you, yeah. if you benefit from this then that's great yeah. But we, but we, what we're realizing right now is that the simple things are what is needed. Yeah. We are all being in this womb, being rebirthed, but we're realizing we just, we need to streamline our lives and really realize what's important right mm -hmm. now. It's not about the monetary. It's not about becoming famous on Instagram. It's mm -hmm. not about, uh, you know, all these, all these distractions from what's really real and, like you said, it's, the, it's to be nurtured, it's to feel, to nurture self yeah, yeah. and to be nurtured and to nurture others. So how do you suggest yeah. like this time we remember to honor the womb and I guess by honoring our home, is that what you're saying? Suggest body, it's our home. It's the way we feed ourselves. It's the way we have our relationships. It's the way we interact with our children. It's the way we interact with members of our community, especially the vulnerable members of our community who especially need that mother energy from us. And, and so it's, it's to keep bringing our attention back to these feminine qualities that have kind of been overridden and, and, and as Val um, you know, referenced, especially in spirituality, it's like, I am the great king of light. And it's like, oh, well, never mind, because I need a cuddle and a cup of tea. <laughs> you know? and it's, like, it's like, you know, I have the power to birth worlds through my womb, so you can keep that, and I'm just going to have a cuddle and a cup of tea. It's, it's really, you know, let's get back, and I love it, down to earth. And, and where, where I was born in Yorkshire, in um, England is a very down-to-earth place, you know, and I, I used to love that, you know, I, as I'm sure everyone will recognize on my spiritual journey, I've been down every avenue with bells on, you know, and I would come home to Yorkshire and, and, and just the, 
the down to earthness of, of, of that energy of it grounding all your fancy ideas <laughs> back into earth and the body and friendships and relationships and and knowing that has to be integrated and and in in the Magdalene Mysteries book you know because I do also believe that we need a new you know that's the practical that's the everyday but what I really think about humans is we need a new cosmology we need a new mythology we need a new story because we are story beings you know we are all religion is is really a very old story that kind of got too codified and stopped being al alive enough and as much as we are this down-to-earth creature we're also this cosmic being and i feel that the the stories the cosmologies the mythologies can kind of create a womb that holds that cosmic being that's in us too and makes that cosmic being understand why we need a cuddle and a cup of tea and um and so in the book you know what we 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 describe as in the really old cosmologies there is the con the concept of the cosmic sophia and the earthly sophia and they were united the the crown and the throne and you know we've talked about crowning in in these traditions when the crown of the cosmic mother descends onto the throne of earth that's the awakening and in the jewish tradition it was called when the messiah came which was not considered to be an individual it was considered to be a state of consciousness the crown of the great mother would descend onto the throne of earth and it seems that what happened in our narratives over the last 2000 years, we, we celebrated the cosmic mother and then gave her a little gender shift <laughs> to the father. And, but we completely missed out the earthly mother, the earth Sophia. Before we get to the new story, why don't you talk about womb awakening and vow? Why don't you talk about your experience and even yeah. picking up the book the womb awake describe if you want to Val, your womb awakening and because it's fascinating because you know i can't really relate but i can learn from it so yeah well i i'm actually going through a womb awakening it's, mm -hmm. it's happening well it, it's how it started when i gave birth to my daughter if you saw her walking behind me <laughs> um She's, she's in the room right now. Okay, me. okay, I didn't see her. She's seven. Uh, she's home. She, I'm homeschooling now, so it's, she's home. She's part of the this whole thing. Um, but when I went through the womb awakening, I also was very nauseous and um, and couldn't go to work when I was pregnant mm -hmm. and was trapped at home and really was going deep. And I was living in a in a in a space of there was lots of nature, 30 acres of land all around me and, and just really going deep within. And, and it was very, it was a very um, tr trying time for me because mm. um, I went through a lot in the womb um, before my daughter was born. Mm. I had her when I was um, 33. So now she's seven and I'm going mm. through it again. Mm. Somehow, and it was in Mount Shasta with, when I was with Alan that I experienced something with the uh, goddess Isis that blood had just started coming through me, um, almost like a menstrual cycle, but I wasn't due at all. Mm -hmm. um, and actually put me on a different, completely different cycle. Mm. And, um, and now I'm, every once in a while, actually just recently, I've been shedding blood after my my cycle mm. and it's just it's just a really strange occurrence there's nothing wrong with me physically it's mm. just that um like you say it is a, it is a shedding of the womb itself and there's something happening deep within my own spirit that's connecting to the womb and i've had womb issues maybe like mm. two years ago mm. and um like just like all this energy, stuck energy there. And it just, I would just curl up in a ball and cry. And I just like, I couldn't understand what was happening to me. And I believe it's also part of this, um, perhaps that I will have another child. And 
I don't know when, but I, I might, that might be the case that my womb is being prepared for the new, for a mm. new child. But there's so much happening within my womb that to me, it's all about the womb. I, my womb t- tells me what I need to eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> my womb tells me who I need to speak to, who I need to connect to, um, what I need to, what I need to do in regards to exercise or anything. My whole life around revolves around my womb. Yeah. The womb is an oracle and that's, you know, and we, we detail that more closely in the Magdalene mysteries book, but since time immemorial, humans have known that a woman's womb is actually an interdimensional portal to cosmic consciousness and thus an oracle. And it's probably the only part of human consciousness right now that remembers who we are, who we need to be and where we're going, which is why, you know, 10 years ago, I think no one spoke about the womb, you know, and now 10 years later, it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere, you know, and it's going to keep, you know, getting bigger. And uh, because the womb is the root, the womb creates life. So if we've lost our path, we need to go back to the source. So we often say source. And when we say source, we often look up. (laughs) But the source is, you know, here. This is what births. And and it's actually vibrating with the, the birthing codes of the galactic womb or the galactic mother. And then beyond that to the, you know, the, the universal wombs that I feel is, is beyond human consciousness to even like try to really understand. I feel like the galactic mother, the galactic womb, who is, is, is the, 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 a very strong relationship we can, um, develop with that cosmic mother that we can kind of understand that she birthed our galaxy and that our earth mother came from her womb so so she's our grandmother or you know we, we can have that relationship with her but we you know we we have to return to this primordial wisdom and especially for the fact that so many of our cultures we're, we're not living in the same places that our ancestors have we're, when we don't have access to the unbroken ancestral traditions uh we've lost connection with the earth but the womb space that primordial wisdom it still knows it is the ancestral womb it, it knows everything it's 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 a library it's so many things it's an oracle it's a library it's a renewer it's a portal and and you just feel in yourself you know a uh, man or woman when you bring your energy down into it something integrates and becomes very powerful and strong whereas when you try and take your energy up and out of yourself some it's like you start to fragment and, and fall apart whereas as uh, this is a very integrating energy and and so of course it's it's the energy and consciousness that we need to connect with now and 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 it's very practical you know and, and i think this is where people have a a, a a difficult relationship with it because it's very practical and and as a woman um like you val all through my life, it's like my womb has called me back to the path. And, and it just took a, a while for me to understand that that was what was happening. Not that, you know, something was going wrong with my womb or it was something, you know, to be ignored. And, and so, um, as I've described in both books, my first visionary experience happened after my menarche when I was 13. And that's when this information started to come to me. And, and so obviously it came to me as that fertility of menstruation um, embodied in my womb. And throughout my life, it's the womb that's called me back to that gnosis. But of course, as per our culture, often I've been running in the other direction, you know, searching for something on a wild goose chase. And, um, and the first time I really remember that happening significantly was when I was 21 and in Thailand and um, 
we were we were going to the full moon parties and I don't think I need to describe what was happening there. There was a lot of hedonism and I I got a, a menstruation that just wouldn't stop. It actually went on for six months in the end. And <laughs> <laughs> and I was horrified. You know, you're a young girl on the beach in Thailand and all you want to do is be in your little bikini and, you know, doing your thing. And I'm constantly having a bleed. And, and one day all my friends went to the party beach which, and, and I stayed on this remote beach that we were staying on that was very rocky and you couldn't go in the sea. And and I just sat on the beach and, you know, the waves were coming. I was listening to the sound of the waves and the wind and, you know, the warmth of the sand under me. And it just occurred to me, I need to ask why this is happening. And so that was the first time that consciously my, my awareness descended down into the womb to ask, why are you bleeding like this? But what happened is when I descended you know, my awareness down into the womb in that moment, I had a Satori experience and it was very elemental. And, and again, we're talking about women, but men are part of this elemental magic of, of nature too. It was all the elements were there, you know, the, the, the warmth of the sun, the movement and flow of the water, the warmth of the earth underneath me. And and my womb was like the queen or the throne at the center of this incredible elemental realm of magic. And, and the magic was so soft. It was like soft and undulating. And, you know, these questions that we asked, it was that feeling you get inside when someone who really loves you holds you. But nature was that lover holding me and that mother holding me. And, and after that moment, my whole life changed because I had always been searching to get out of my body, you know, whether <laughs> it was through, you know, alcohol or, or substances that do that or spirituality, astral, you know, the, the, the idea that you could reach that ecstasy by somehow leaving your body. And this was the moment that I understood it's, by entering my body, I'm not actually really in my body, <laughs> you know? And, and of course, as I, I, I took this new pathway, you, you start to meet the ecstasy of creation within the body, but you also start to meet the shadow and the pain that is held within the body. And, and, and that, and then the great work begins and, and the journey begins. And, I obviously at that time I, I didn't um I didn't I wasn't aware of this, but now the way on, on this path we vision the body is that the body is more intelligent than the soul. <laughs> so that seems like mind blowing to most people because we've been taught that the body is just a useless kind of piece of flesh that our great magnificent soul inhabits. And then, you know, casts off like a, you know, a, a wrapper when we die. But actually in the Sophia cosmologies, the human body is part of the body of earth. It's actually part of Sophia and it's encoded with her intelligence. And the soul, the personal soul comes into this body of Sophia to learn from Sophia. So, so it's the other way around that we've imagined it, that, that we're like so magnificently intelligent. It's that the body, earth, is Sophia. I, I always knew that the body had a spiritual component, but it, mm. it is the spirit. It is nature informing our, the small part of our mm, fractal part of the whole, but it's giving us the totality of existence as we incarnate. Exactly. Yeah. And one of the things I always like marveled at is that, you know, I'd heard and I'd felt deeply in my own, um, you know, meditations that, that literally souls cue to get on earth. And, you know, when you're having a really hard time on earth, you're like, oh, God, why have I ended up here? <laughs> this is dreadful. And, you know, I'm sure we're, so many people were feeling that right now. Um, and then when you think, oh, souls are queuing up to get here. This is like, this is like the, the gold level package. This is, this is it, you know? 
This is Sophia. We are living within the body of Sophia. It's like no wonder indigenous people are just on their knees in humility and gratitude. We are literally in the body of Sophia. We are a cosmic personal soul having the experience of living in her incarnated body and intelligence. And I'm not a scientist, my husband is, but you know, one of the things that I love, which you know he describes is that if you were if you are driving somewhere, you know, sometimes your mind's thinking and you get to the other side of the, the city, who was driving? Right? Because your mind you were thinking of that. Your actually your Sophianic intelligence was driving the car. Now, what's also interesting is, you know, we've talked about the amazing thing about a woman creating a baby in her womb, but it's not our personal consciousness. If I, you know, uh, me and Val have both had babies, but if we had to sit down now and do an instruction manual from our mind of how to grow a baby, we would just be, it was the Sophianic intelligence within our womb that created the baby. And in the same way that, um, and, and we describe it in womb awakening as the cerebellum, as you know, if you want to look at it in terms of brain structure, consciousness is the mother consciousness. In the same way that if you're in incredible danger or peril, the mother consciousness shuts off your thinking mind. The thinking mind is the child, not the mother. So if you are about to die in a car crash, your thinking mind will be shut down by the mother consciousness of the body while her intelligence takes over to try and do everything she can to preserve your body and your life, which is why, you know, often when people have been through very difficult experiences that they've survived, they're like, I can't remember. I can't remember doing it. You know, the mother who lifts the car to save the baby, you know, because in that moment, the Sophianic intelligence, the mother consciousness within us took over from the small thinking mind. And we look at our world and what have we created? We've created a world from this small thinking mind, uh, not from the Sophianic intelligence within our, our, our body and of course our souls in communion with that and earth. And so we have an amazing opportunity to go down that path. Val, do you think something different is happening now with the womb of women? I mean, both for both of you, but I get the sense because I know Val that there's some new intelligence or maybe just a renewed intelligence. Well, I don't know if there is a new intelligence, but I do feel like right now there is a, a reconnection mm -hmm. of women like Serene and I, where, where the wombs are calling to each other. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, some people say, oh, the souls call to each other. But I think it's also, like someone was saying, the, the body has an intelligence. I also feel like the womb is not only calling for women, but it's also calling for your sacred partner. It's also calling for your mm -hmm. sacred circle, your tribe. It's calling. Yeah. It's calling. And it's, it's also calling your sacred space, your sacred land, mm -hmm. where you need to move. Mm -hmm. So it's calling. It's, mm -hmm. it's really coming on the forefront it's coming up and saying listen listen to what i need mm -hmm. and that's why i say i don't do anything without my womb mm -hmm. I, everything goes through my womb first <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know it's funny we do this so once we were at the we were at the um uh, we were picking up a hire car at Heathrow and they, they, there was a question about whether we needed insurance. So I was like, okay, as I asked my woman, <laughs> so we did the whole thing at the counter at Heathrow. <laughs> you know, does the room say, no, room says, no, we won't have a car crash. We, we don't need to have the insurance. And, you know, there was some kind of very bewildered, gawping young <laughs> male staff there. But what, you know, what I really thought when you said that, Val, what it kind of prompted in me, is when we look at this case of the individual, when the individual's life is not working, or especially when the, the individual is in a life or death situation, what we know is that the mother consciousness takes over. Mm -hmm. right? Exactly, I was just going to say that. <laughs> so we could say collectively, the mother consciousness is taking over. Yeah. That's what's you know, because, you know, aside from the event that's happening with the world right now that, you know, 
we don't know how this will play out, but what we're hoping is it, it will just be a, a, you know, an event and then, and then we'll move forward. But, you know, the bigger picture is we're, we're living out of balance with Earth. And we're, we're kind of in that slow-mo car crash as a collective. And so the mother consciousness is, is coming on, you know, the wombs are switching on to, to take control of the wheel, so as to speak, to, to veer us away from catastrophe and, and towards, um, you know, this beautiful holistic vision. And, and for me, that's one of the keys that I always come back to with mother consciousness and, and the womb. As humans, we're kind of addicted to catastrophe and suffering. And our religions present catastrophe and suffering as, as, as something holy. But what I feel so deeply in the mother consciousness is like, you're a mother, Val. Do you want catastrophe for your children? Absolutely not. You, do you want suffering for your children? Absolutely not. So what do you want for your daughter? You want her to grow and bloom and have an incredible life and be supported and, and to showcase her gifts and just dazzle the world with her beauty and to, to be surrounded by friendship. So I think you're a human mother. That's what you want for your child. What does the cosmic mother want for us? What does the earth mother want? for us she's a mother right she's like a big coddling mother and yeah you know obviously sometimes she's gonna slap us a bit once you know if she thinks we're about to destroy ourselves but i think we really have to bring ourselves back to that knowing that there is no there is no desire for us to suffer and have catastrophe you know that we we need to get back on the mother wave that brings yes. things into resonance and harmony and community and collaboration and creativity and this is what we see in nature we go out in nature and it's it's amazing and and of course death is part of nature disease is part of nature it, you know so so we really we learn from nature you know when i grew up my my mom told me that nature is god you know and and she also described how nature is an all good as humans perceive all good i.e nothing happens that you don't want to happen but that nature is is this magnificent and collaborative intelligence that creates beauty and harmony and and, and, and this is our teacher, you know, this is where we need to look to, to see how we can bring that into our communities and lives. Many people believe that Mother Earth is being angry right now and all the catastrophes that are happening, all the storms, all the yeah. Earth's eruptions, if you will, yeah. are yeah. to punish us. Oh, and yeah. I always, have, I always fight that, saying, why would mother punish? Yeah, no, that's a projection from your birth mother, who was probably could be a bit of a bitch sometimes, <laughs> you know. But I don't believe that's the earth mother, and you know, obviously, there's this menstrual energy. It's a fierce energy. It's a strong energy, but it's not a punishing energy. It's it's a different thing. It's like again, you think to yourself as a mother or a father, when you're guiding your children, you're not just kind of letting them run riot and destroy themselves or harm themselves. Uh, and if they are, there's a kind of a fierce energy that comes up to bring them back onto the right path. But it's not a punishing energy. It's it's full of love, you know. And again, it's it's so especially in you know catastrophic times it's easy to kind of it's an easy well worn groove in human consciousness that we're being punished we're sinners you know blah, blah, blah. but i just feel that's not any way um you know how the divine mother sees us and whenever i've had that divine mother energy flow through me what i've seen is how beautiful she thinks her human children are how she is cooing over us and, and actually that we've lost the ability to see the beauty in each other you know so that's what i noticed is that when i saw people through divine mother's eyes they seemed beautiful and so cute and whereas in my human self sometimes i'm angry or frustrated or i can't get to that kind of you know 
love. And, and you know, one of the things um, that, you know, I like to kind of percolate different ideas and see how they fit, you know, as a postpartum mom myself, I realized that one of my sadnesses was that sometimes I feel too tired to um, be the full mom I want to be, <laughs> you know, it's like, um, I want to be even more present with my daughter and be even, give her even more love. But sometimes I just feel too tired and exhausted. And then I thought, wow, you know, I wonder if Earth Mother feels like that, that, that she's very tired and exhausted and depleted and she wants to change, not to punish us, because she just really wants to be the best mom that she can be. You know, because uh, I, I, I think that's how the mother consciousness thinks. It's how can I love more? It's never how can I punish more? So there's there's some theories about this virus that's going around. Mm. That it might be man-made or it is just a natural virus. Wherever it doesn't really matter. It's, it's here mm. it's now. But what I'm sensing is the, what the virus is doing. It's yes, it's causing illness. It's causing mm. death. It's causing anxieties. It's causing all kinds of things that we, we could say that's low vibrational. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, it could be very high vibrational. I mean, there's, I also feel like there's, this is a time where people are making babies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because so much of the Western world, or even just the world in general, have been so busy working and parents have had to leave each other or people in general. Yeah. Um, couples had to work so hard to keep up with the matrix um, and they're now coming together they're being kept home to mm -hmm. be to re reconvene and re and love each other and and really kind of come into that cuddling mm -hmm. um, back to cuddling right and mm -hmm. and there I feel like we're gonna have you know baby not baby boomers but whatever they're gonna call it I really feel like that's coming. And, and I, I also feel like there's a new coming of souls here on mm -hmm. earth that are going to be changing the planet mm -hmm. and as a whole. Yeah, I, I agree, Val. And that's what I received. I, I call them the children of the rose. So I, I feel that the children of the rose are arriving and they started to come in last year. And um, it, it marks a big shift because we've been receiving children that have been called indigo children. And, um, and there's now a huge shift as these children of the rose come in, bringing a completely new vibration with them and, and, um, and changing reality. Um, and of course, that's how we change reality. Women change their wombs, consciousness, and birth new realities through the children they birth through their wombs. Well, what is the new story that you bring out in the Magdalene Mysteries? I mean, you, you hinted at, but what do you see? Because we can't live and raise these children in the old story because mm. that is a mm. dead end. You know, well, one, one of my, which again, I think is a very feminine approach is my approach to answers is like a buffet. I, I don't just order one meal off the menu. I like to have a buffet. So I think with all the questions we're asking ourselves about the virus now, I, I think it's like a buffet of answers and they're all true. <laughs> you know, at every level one could be true. And, and, and so it's really, you know, feeling what's true for you what's life saying this is your piece of the pie this is your section of the buffet and um and so i do feel like you know a, a piece of the buffet is that a new story is coming through mm -hmm. and anyone who's been feeling this has been knowing this for for many years and we just didn't know how it would happen and and I feel the new story is the, is the feminine dimension is awakening on earth. Mm -hmm. And that was what was predicted for 2012. And, and actually, you know, from what I read, actually the Mayan calendar said that that, that phase ended at the end of 2019. So at the end, the end of 2019, you know, me and my husband sat there on when Solstice and said, this was kind of really the real 2012. <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen next year, you know, I'll keep, keep your hat on. And, um, and so I think this, this feminine dimension is happening. And, and, um, 
And I, I really, I don't have the answers for how it's going to unfold. But one of the things I know that during this period is, you know, just before this event happened, I had a dream where I felt like I'd descended to the very ground of the underworld and everything was black and I met Isis, but I addressed her as, oh, dark one. Mm. And she was, and I said, how could I have imagined I could have done this and not met you here? And she was death. Isis was death. But she wasn't, you know, we imagine death is just a human being leaving a body, but death is an actual vibration, you know, and it's part of life. It's like a black hole and a white hole. So you might say white hole is life. Black hole is, is what we Sounds call like it. like Kali, actually, right? Exactly. And Pele and, you know, all, the, all these goddesses. And, and death teaches us so much. And so I think that's, you know, again, this period we're in, you know, the crucifixion and the resurrection, the death and the rebirth, they're, they're intertwined. And so... Uh, in 2018, as, as we were writing the Magdalene, Magdalene Mysteries, I, I sat with my mom as she died for a month. And, um, and it was a really interesting metaphor as well, you know, to just be with death and, 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 and see death in its process. And, and what, what I realized is, and I think anyone who me, is that human lives are so short. They're so short. They feel so everything to us. But in the big schema of things, uh, you know, a human life is minuscule, right? And, and, and death is, is what teaches us as that. But that there's a, a, a huger intelligence. You know, Azra said to me about this time, it's, oh, it's like the Divine Mother's just given a baby to someone while she's gone to have a cup of tea. And it'll just be like a nanosecond in Earth's intelligence. This is just a nanosecond. So one of the things I, I'm playing with or thinking with, or we're all thinking, how can we go forward practically after this? Yeah, I mean, it seems like we are getting signs, like first that we're all connected. Yeah. No one is immune, like some person in China or someone in Himalayas or somewhere in South America. We're all human. We have a human field of connection. So it seems yeah. like the new story is about we have to include everyone. Yeah. That we have to get to know the earth and ourselves and our aloneness. Yeah. Also share. So mm -hmm. we're formulating something. So, so, you know, what I, what I felt with that after this event, there's a way that we kind of, we feel like we, we don't want to get back to normal in the sense of the things that weren't working. But there's also a very human sense that when we, we're afraid and we say, I want things to get back to normal, what we're really saying is, I want to feel safe again, <laughs> you know? And I think that's a really good, natural, healthy human feeling. And, and so we're saying, how can we go forward? And yes, it's a new birth. Yes, it's this. But we're also aware that, you know, there are just so many people who might not be able to feed their children now, you know, and we, ha we, we can't be glibly talking about new worlds when so much of the existing world, you know, is experiencing so much suffering. And, you know, one of the things that how I relate to patriarchy is as an ancestor with respect, it's an ancestor who has created us. So as we know, once you take away, you know, our shops and our restaurants and our money, we can't fend for ourselves because we have been birthed through the ancestor of patriarchy. And like we do with ancestral healing, we actually have to acknowledge that and honor it and, and then make another choice. And so my, my feeling as I've been percolating it is that the evolution, the new co-evolution can be a lot slower and a lot less dramatic than we think. And so what, is this energy teaching us? It's about slowing down, it's slowness. And again, we see how programmed we are with masculine consciousness. Let's change it, let's go fast, let's hard, 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 fast, 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 change, 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 you know? <laughs> and um, and so, so the way I'm viewing it is, it's like we just had a big slow bubble <laughs> over everything is slow. And to trust that we can change stories, we can change 
direction. We can do it with, with vision and compassion. So for me, as vision is let's see where we're going. Compassion is we're not, we're not there yet and a lot of people are suffering and we must include that. And, and, and I think it's to do it at Earth's pace. How does she grow things? How does she regrow things? And so, so I feel like the first step, again, is we need to return to womb consciousness we need to return to earth consciousness and then all the answers are going to come to us and it might be slower than we want but we have to trust that because that's what we're learning to trust again is that feminine energy when we've been living so fast and furious for so many years when you get bell well i actually want to refer back to the womb awakening you have on chapter 26 sending to earth and you talk about feminine crown interesting enough we are experiencing the coronavirus which we are crowning <laughs> the crown virus so you want to speak to that a bit yeah I, it's exactly you know i my feeling is we actually cannot comprehend how far outside primordial mother consciousness we are mm. and that is really our tragedy and that includes every one of us. And that's incredibly humbling, right? That we are so far outside of it, we don't even know it or recognize it anymore. And that through, in our culture, in our family, in general, like, and now we're looking like 5,000 years, we have been soaked in structures that tell us that only the masculine way is acceptable and the feminine way is not. So, you know, in, in the Magdalene book, we took the left-hand path is the feminine and it, it, it was called sinister. <laughs> so even our language is we cannot express the feminine as positive. Mm. And even then our language, you see our language is polarized into a duality. So we know that language structures consciousness. So we first have to begin to know that as a human race, our language has been so modified that it's restructured our consciousness so that we can't even come close to who we are or what we need. So it, it's happened at such a profound level. And I, and I think this is, this is what calls forth our inner mystic. I think we all understand the practical side of becoming more feminine, but the mystical side of, of becoming more feminine kind of gets us into the Gnostic mythologies and is, is a bit like the film, The Matrix. <laughs> you know, it's like we are so deeply programmed to ascend, to come out, to, to do, to devalue everything feminine. We're, we're so wildly out of balance. And so this, this process is really like a reprogramming and at all levels and a restructuring of our consciousness to, to bring us back down, to, to stop that, that, that primal experience of coming up and out. And so we know in trauma that if you experience a big trauma, you, your consciousness jets out of the top of your head. And the next time you're frightened, you maybe can tune into that in your body, your energy will start to rush up your body and it might get stuck in your heart or stuck in your throat. And if you're really frightened, like a, a crisis life level, you're actually disembodied. So really humanity are not even on in their bodies or on earth, <laughs> which is why we have so maligned and desecrated our bodies on earth. So really it's a grand soul retrieval for humanity to trust the fear again and, and to come back into these bodies, back into this relationship with the great earth structure and cosmic structure and, and, and to come back down, back in and, you know, story for it is a kind of a different conversation, but what that kind of asks us is why did we pop out in the first case? If this is all designed for us to have this kind of incredible university experience with the, you know, incarnated divine mother, Sophia, why, why are we so afraid? 
why did we pop out? And I, there are many different theories for that. And, and I have mine and, you know, but I feel that it makes sense that at some point there was a collective human trauma where humanity just popped out and it's it's never come back in again and like any trauma we've been recreating the same traumas um you know repetition you know going round and round re-traumatizing ourselves and and so that's why i feel in this 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 crown this cosmic mother coming back into the throne it's really important that we don't engage in re-traumatizing scenarios or languages mm -hmm. and we we heal i think there was some massive trauma to the human race that disconnected us but it also could be because now we know the value mm -hmm. of, life, of the womb of being embodied mm -hmm. and and we didn't know it or some yeah. people did but i want to ask you maybe and maybe val too is there a is there a ritual because you talk about ritual or something mm. we could do that you know in this time of a mm. yeah yeah i mean there's so many rituals and i think ritual is something that feels good to you um one of the time you know time immemorial rituals is to take a bowl and a bowl represents a womb. It holds things. And so you can, you can cleanse that bowl. You can, so, so you can take a bowl and you can consecrate it to represent your womb, the womb of your soul, or the womb of the world, the womb of the earth, the womb of the collective. And you can do rituals. So some of the things I do, if it's a stage where, you know, it feels like a lot's happening and a lot needs to be cleansed and released, I take water with salt and I, I cleanse the lining of the bowl. And as I do it, I make prayers and affirmations that, you know, in, in, we are releasing all that doesn't serve us for the, in the highest good. And then I rinse the bowl out. I might put it outside in the sun and let the sun dry it. I, and then, you know, you can do so many things with it. You can float candles on it and, you know, bring the fire energy in. I make flower bowls. But the point is you, uh, and, and this is what our ancestors did. And again, kind of to the modern mind, it seems a bit, you know, like, well, it's just a bowl, isn't it? <laughs> you know, but our ancestors know life is magic. It's like if you consecrate that bowl as a symbolic womb, it actually transfigures into a, 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 a womb consciousness that can actually have real and magical effects. And when you work with that continuously, you see that happen. So you can develop that relationship. And right now we're at home, you know, and have that bowl and, and you, you can fill it with water, you can fill it with herbs, you can fill it with soil, you can infuse intentions into the water, you can pray over the water. And, and actually in the Magdalene Mysteries book, we have a few bowl, some of these bowl rituals um, to, to do that. And, and for me, that's always my go-to ritual because, you know, also a lot of people, you know, you're, you're busy, you've got children, you know, we, you know, a lot of us, we don't live in a world where we, we have time to do three hour ceremonies, but a bowl ceremony is so easy to do. You know, you can just do it five, 10 minutes every day, but it will build up in potency. And it also helps you tune into is this a day that we need to let go of something? Or is this a day that we need to infuse something? You know, do we need to bring something out or put it in? And I know a lot of women who do these bowl rituals with their children as well, and children love it. You know, they just instantly take to it. They just love it. And um, yeah, and you know, and, and in our, you know, research, this was one of the amazing gifts of the priestesses that they, consecrated talismanic items they lived completely talismanically and and a way of that is that we are magic but we've we've lost our magic and we don't cultivate our magic and and they cultivated their magic but their magic was in their earrings in their makeup in their dress in their ritual items. So we see Mary Magdalene, you know, has the, you know, the alabaster jar. She's always carrying it. 
that was a, a symbolic womb. So, so it's a very precious talismanic item. And, and, and in the old traditions, these items were actually believed to be alive, like an actual personage. And they were kept in the Holy of Holies and they were created in very specific ways. And I, I actually feel like that's one of my strongest feelings that this kind of talismanic living is, is, is rebirthing and, and part of this uh, radical domestic, domestic world we've entered where we don't want to buy things that are mass produced. On, on slave labor and then that go in a, a rubbish tip that destroy earth. It's like we, we want to develop this like rich ritual, um, magic infused relationship, not just with each other and but with the, the items that we use. And, and, and that's what, you know, the Mary Magdalene and her priestesses, that's how they would have lived, where every moment was charged with that kind of intentional magic. Mm-hmm. And, 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 it's, and I, I feel that there's such a power for us there because we look out into the big wide world and we think, what can we do? You know, but we, we can cultivate this immense power in our own intentional relationship with the magic of the everyday. And it births something very profound. And, and in a way, one of the great cons is that we've been taught that it doesn't, it's pointless. And it's almost like we've been steered away from, from these ways that we can actually conjure up an incredible transformational energy so much more that we can go into in the Magdalene Mysteries, Mm -hmm. which is coming out this year. It's coming out next week. It's coming out on April 7th. Yeah. And so I want to ask you, Alan, as a man, what, when you read this, what, what, what's your take on it? What comes up for you? Well, thanks for asking. Uh, For me, it seems like a balancing. It's um, Mm a, coming into center I, I feel we've been so out of balance with mm. the 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 mental um mind approach and mm. what you're doing with the magdalene mysteries is is allowing me to feel the earth more it's it's, mm. it's allowing me to feel my body more be less intellectual mm. and, and more present in form this mm. This is this sacred object, the mm. earth. This is th- these earth bodies are are magical, consecrated objects that mm. are infused with the spirit. And so, your book reminds me of all mm. that is sacred, and all that um, the feminine is trying to hold in this mm. new time. Mm. It's not just an idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's really the most important thing we can do is recognize the equality of both of us, mm. both sexes, both parts, yeah. because we are parts of the same self. So, mm. that, and then of course your specificness and your detail and and how you outline the mystery schools that are part of this is mm. bringing us back to the sacred way. So you're really bringing us back to a to an original way of union. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, one of, one of the feelings I have, you know, when we talk about the sacred feminine, in some circles there's a, a tendency to maybe exclude men, to feel like the sacred feminine doesn't include the masculine, which is just a flip-flop from one to the other. I have felt that, oh, where? I, yes. It's like you're not women unless you have men, and you're not men unless you have women, unless you're part of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I also feel we're, we're, I feel like a new man is being born, and I'm really excited to see that because I feel that, uh, you know, there's so much that's going to come through the masculine mm-hmm. through this reintegration with Sophia. And, and I, I feel like that's really exciting and it's really important. We make space for that and we don't just exclude men from the conversation because again, they're, they're a full half of the recipe. 
Mm. I, and I think it's up to men to trust the womb mm. of the woman. Like that's yeah. their power. They, they, it's like that sharing of power is trust. Yeah. Again. And I think also to acknowledge that obviously women have suffered so much through what's happened in the world as have men. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's a, a feeling that only women have suffered, but actually men have suffered equally. And, and, you know, in some kind of paradoxical way more, because we know that men have higher suicide rates, higher rates of depression. And, and, and we see that actually little boys are, are literally um, brainwashed out of any feminine aspect of their person which is really one of the most heinous crimes on the earth right now and so I feel as all these new moms are awakening into womb consciousness and birthing these boys onto earth who are gonna just I can't wait to see who they become you know uh, these these young men that are going to come through these awakened wounds and are not going to have this great um, burden that our previous generations of men have had to contend with. I had the same stream of consciousness is that men so people believe that women are airy and fairy and mm. they're not really grounded but it's mm. quite the opposite Mm, yeah. Look what's happening right now. We are being grounded right now. And it's and what are we doing? We are doing the like you were saying, the domestication side of life. We're we're working within the home, within the womb. Uh, you know, my daughter and I make jokes, the the womb, the 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 room, the womb. <laughs> <laughs> and uh we're working inside again and and the man the masculine is actually the 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 ether mm. they're the ones that's supposed to be airy and fairy so yeah yeah it was almost like a role reversal mm. but not really like thinking we the even the spiritual communities believe that women are the ones that are airy fairy and the, and the masculine is the grounded one and they can, and they're the ones that can support the woman and they can do, they need to do what they have to do and they work in the earth, but it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. And you know what I, I think as well, you know, this is some, one of the things that we tried to convey in the womb awakening book. It's the lunar cycle that we've all got a full moon and a dark moon in us <laughs> and every little gradient in between. And there's a full moon expression of masculinity and a dark moon expression of masculinity, just in the sense that there's a full moon expression of femininity and a dark moon expression. But what we've all been is polarized into these like tiny little niches. And, you know, and, and dependent, sometimes it's on a global scale that, you know, women can only be sweet and nice and men can only be, but we've kind of got all these qualities within us to conjure with and play with. And, and there are so many amazing archetypes and there is what I call the solar feminine and the lunar feminine. And then there is the solar masculine and the lunar masculine. And, and we see this, if we look in history, you know, like a solar masculine might be, you know, like the sun god archetype archetypes like Zeus and but then there are these amazing lunar masculine archetypes um, you know such as Pan and Gwythian and and all these more playful feminine uh, you know godlike archetypes and it's the same for women in in Magdalene mysteries you know we write a lot about Inanna and she's 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 got that kind of um, She's very bright and bold and fiery and feisty, you know, an energy that we haven't, as women, you know, we've, we've had to be sweet and nice or, or you're the kind of loud, ballsy bitch, you know. And, and, and I, I love in Magdalene Mysteries that I really feel like Inanna is stepping forward to bring this energy to women. Like, you can be this, this, this energy too. And equally, men can be this playful earth pan energy and this lunar energy and there's just we we just have so many worlds within us that we haven't explored and we've just been put into niches basically i feel that now is the time that the the poles are emerging it's mm. not, it's not we're not becoming these two magnetic poles completely opposite of each other but 
actually merging the poles and that's where the alchemy comes in mm. of both masculine and feminine coming together and and coming into these these swirls of energy that just kind of intertwine and mm. and then we ourselves can recognize that we have these poles within us and that we don't and then i feel like you know this whole movement of um of you know the how we're not calling he or she it's they or mm. i don't know what the other ones are but but i i believe that this is like a it's like a almost like a misunderstanding mm. of what it is it actually is that we're going through spiritually um it's it's almost like a a different it's coming through in a in a form of like maybe more of like anger and frustration and maybe even like um um, um, just being misunderstood, um, but but people are becoming people are becoming uh, they don't re- they don't recognize they can't understand what is happening within them that they are feeling both mm. and mm. they and they don't know how to express it and mm. but just stepping stepping into your natural self and let allow for both. I can be very feminine and wear makeup and, and be very femme flowy. And then I can also be very, I'll wear a cap and I'll wear jeans and I'll t-shirt and I, I, I can, I can do both. And to me, it's natural either way. Yeah. This comes back to feminine consciousness that we're, we're, we're coming back into the great gift about the logical mind is that it narrows in on something and it says it's this or that. It's one or the other. And, and it has its benefits. Um, whereas feminine consciousness is, is a buffet. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's not an either or. It's an everything. It's a play. It's a festival. It's a marriage. It's a cyclical spiraling dance. You know, and these are all the metaphors that have been used in ancient mystery tra- traditions. And But now, again, we're so, we've been so conditioned into the masculine mind it's that or that it's either or and now of course science is the new religion which is taking on the new mantle of dogma whereas when we go back to feminine consciousness you know it's either or and and we see that in the quantum realm and we know that the quantum realm is 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 a feminine type consciousness that these these things of either or it must be that or that it can be both it can be possibilities coming in and out of being and so i feel that as as this new consciousness comes through we just get to be more playful and experimental with how we express ourselves in the chinese they say yin becomes yang you can't have yin without yang or yang without yin and it's a constantly moving yeah yeah but one more question i want to talk to both of you about is the whole idea of the magdalene because bao came to that on her own and you came to that on her own and there's probably a lot of women tuning into the it, what would you well Bao, you talk about your experiences first about becoming the magdalene the, the mary magdalene being mm. So for me, it's a, it's a, it's been since my Kundalini awakening, I've been constantly given um, information through beings like Yeshua, like Isis, Kuan Yin, um, uh, Archangel Michael, um, Kali, uh, Ganesh, all these beings, all these light beings coming to me, giving me information that I already felt like I knew. <laughs> it's like, oh, I know that, and I know this, and I, I, I have these codes. I have these lines of codes within me. And it's funny because my, my background is programming. <laughs> it's computer programming. So, you know, I, I see it visually in that way. And, um, and then, you know, it just more and more, more and more I would be giving teachings, more and more. Um, I would receive in, in, uh, as a reflection of self from others that, um, that I was reflecting teachings of the Magdalene. Mm. And my relationship got deeper and deeper with these Magdalene codes. Mm. And so much that 
I could, I was breathing them. I was, everything was revolving around the Magdalene codes, going back to Inanna, going back to again, Isis and, um, and on this, this sisterhood, um, mm. which to me, it doesn't include, it doesn't disinclude men. Mm. It, it very much includes men. Mm. And, um, and for me, it's all, it's all inclusive. And, um, <clears throat> and so it's, it's, become me where I, I, I was doing things like giving, um, water, water blessings. I was calling them spiritual showers. And, you know, and then I, and then people were telling me, did you know that Mary Magdalene used to do that? Mm -hmm. And I didn't. And, you know, I, I would, I would do, um, initiations of priestess of initiations. And did you know Mary Magdalene do that? No, I didn't know that. And, and only because my spirituality doesn't come from a book. It, it, really, it just comes through downloads and information and I, and I like to keep it that way. And your book is one of the, one of the books that I read, but I rarely read books. It's this book that I've read and Magdalene Codes and one other book. Mm. But this book for me, as I flipped through it, when Alan handed it to me, I just flipped through it and I did it. I do it now. I can still feel it. I can feel the energy coming out of the book. Mm -hmm almost like I don't even need to read the book. I can just flip through the book and the codes are coming out and I'm receiving the information. You know, it's funny about people ask what's the best way to read our books. And I also, I always say, just put it under your pillow and go to sleep. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so true. As I flip through the book, I feel it in my womb. I feel mm. it in my heart chakra. Mm. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that we all this information is already within us. Mm. We, some of us carry it more and are able to express it more, better than others. And some of us can embody an archetype. Mm. And as we receive the, the multitude of gifts that they were given and perhaps can, can look through the eyes of their soul, mm. but we are all becoming this divine self. We're mm. stepping into that. And mm. so books like Womb Awakening is, is, that is exactly what that is. But it's, it's, beyond, it's beyond just the womb. Mm. It's, really the, it's really what, what is happening. It's, it's, it's earth awakening. It's mm. humanity's awakening. Yeah. And, you know, I, Speaking to that, you know, the, for me, the Magdalene, and there's kind of three things that go on. And number one is just, we go into it in the Magdalene Mysteries book, but the word Magdalene is an old word that either means great mother or great womb or great doorway. <laughs> so, so, so when we have this return of the Magdalene is only another way of saying the return of the mother or the return of the womb consciousness or primordial consciousness. I like to interchange with that so that men who can feel a bit off put by a womb can understand. So, so, so that's how it all ties in. You know, for me personally, uh, that Magdalene, Magdalene energy first came uh, through a very, very ancient grandmother, a Neanderthal lady. And, and so for me personally, the Magdalene, you know, you might say the Magdalene line or the Magdalene teachings are actually an unbroken encodement of very, very, very ancient uh, teachings from Neanderthal female womb shamans who were eradicated from earth, but live on in our DNA 4%. And, and, and it's their tradition that, that the Magdalene is, is, is channeling this very, very ancient uh, prehistoric um, and, and pre-human in a way. I mean, I know we understand Neanderthals are human, but pre, you know, as, as we experience ourselves. And, and then, and so that's the past, you know, and I think the future is what I felt with Mary Magdalene is she's really speaking to young women. She's really got her eye on young women, um, especially, you know, from the ages of menarche to 40. And, um, and so, you know, it, 
I think in, in modern culture, they're called millennials, but I like to call them the Magdalenials. <laughs> so, so what I, you know, when, when we wrote our books, we didn't really, we weren't writing them for an audience, if that makes sense. We were just writing them. But in the aftermath, what we felt deeply is that these books are for the Magdalenials above all else. <laughs> they're for the young women who are here now and awakening their wounds and have just, uh, you know, come into a culture that was a little bit more shaken up than the older generations and, are just, and they're just able to just switch it on, you know, and that's their destiny, you know, that's their destiny. So, so, you know, obviously Magdalene is speaking to everyone of all ages, of all genders, but I, I particularly feel that there is an energy coming in young women between 20 and 40, who I call the Magdalenials, who, who just don't know what's hit them. But it's like their destiny is to uh, carry this wisdom, to explore this wisdom, to share this wisdom with others, to embody it, to live it. And, and I think we're really seeing that. And, and, and our books that, like I say, are, are not written, we had in mind no particular person for it, but they really seem to land with younger women you know and and just like it just makes perfect sense to them it's like like you said val it's like they don't really need to read it they just need to go oh okay that's you know <laughs> they just need to touch upon the energy and it's like you know i see it as, as just kind of huge genetic fairy lights going back into prehistory and they're all just flipping on through all these wounds lighting up and uh, and so it's exciting so we've got this new generation of women really who were switched on to magdalene and more and more and more coming and so what are they going to birth through their wombs it's quite exciting for me and, and and for me in that i trust you know when everything else seems like crazy <laughs> and you know i i feel like you know i say this when i see my daughter and i see your daughter i feel like in that i trust completely you know now i can let go of all my questions and all my fears and know that i trust in that and that I trust in these magical young women who are emerging now at this time. And they're so brave and they don't, you know, I, I'm in my 40s and they don't really have to kind of go through some of the gloop that, you know, for instance, I, I went through where, you know, even just saying words like <laughs> womb or, you know, uh, these were, it was totally forbidden and, you know, you have to go through a huge journey within yourself whereas these younger women and now we've got you know 20 year olds coming through it's just at their fingertips they don't have to go through that big sludgy process to in, inherit the feminine it's just lighting up within them and so i feel like the future is in their hands and and i trust them i trust them and i believe in them and i feel the greater message is that magdalene's here for them and she believes in them and she's guiding them and 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 so the the new way will be birthed through these wounds thank you thank you there's so much more we could talk about because and of course you put that in two books so um yeah <laughs> But you touched on so many beautiful things. Um, the two books, I'll show the book you have there, Val, The Womb mm -hmm. Awakening. That, that's your first book? That's right, yeah. And, 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 and that's, is that more for women, you think? No, I, I that for all all genders, I think especially for men. I think every man should have a copy of Womb Awakening. I agree. I was thinking of lending this to my partner so <laughs> yeah yeah and then your new book is this one and how can people get in touch with you Saren? you and your so partner? well the books are available through inner traditions our publisher and also on amazon and uh, magdalene mysteries is released april the 7th and my website is www.serenbertrand.com. So you can email me there. As I say on my email, I might not always email you back. 
<laughs> because uh, I, you know that's that I feel like that's another way of the feminine. You know, we we don't have to. We can. We may not. But um, <laughs> but I you can you can email me and and sometimes I email back. But um, you know, mainly it's just read the books. Uh, for us, the books are we just want to put them out into the world to pollinate the world. We don't really want the energy to, in the sense come back to us and be about us. So I would say buy the book, buy it for your friend, recommend it, write a review, you know, stir the cauldron, let this amazing energy, uh, you know, kind of come up. And, and as Val said, this is, this is the wisdom that's within you. You don't have to refer back to anyone else. You, you are the holder of the flame and you carry it forwards. And, and you're, Val, you're doing a Magdalene gathering, right? Um. Well, I, I have something called the Magdalene Tribe, but, you know, Serena, I'm actually writing a book called The Book of Mary, which is a book. Yeah, you said. So um, I try not to read any books about Mary Magdalene during this time. But again, um, I, I just need to flip through your book and I'm like, I receive all this information. But yeah. um, this, to me, this is um, all, the, all of the Magdalene's are coming through right now. And we're creating all of these um, ways for people to reconnect with their own Magdalene self. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you, Val. How do people find you? ValSecrets.com or MagdaleneTribe.com. Well, and what about you, Alan? I'm at NewRealities.com because, as Saren said, it is a new reality. <laughs> and, um, and also my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash new realities, where I'll have this posted and Val will have this posted on hers. So thank you so much. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We could have sat and chatted for hours. I know. <laughs> we could have had a marathon. I can say, I can live with you for a month. <laughs> are you doing, I mean, after all this clears, are you going to be doing any retreats or? Um, yeah, I think so, possibly. And and Azra, my partner who co-authored the book, so important to say, not cut the man out now yet. My my partner Azra, he, he co-authored the book and he did a lot of the hardcore research that, you know, I, I don't have the patience for. Um, and so he'll be doing some retreats. And yeah, I you know, we, we will, but there's no plans at the moment. We've got a young baby, so we're just we're just enjoying that. Well, hopefully yeah. we'll get to see you sometime. Yes, yes. definitely. Congratulations definitely. on the new birth of your child. Thank and you. And I wish you much love and, and a happy and healthy experience during this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you too. Well, it's been lovely to speak to you both. Thank you. Touch and um, thank you.